Thank you. The question is the motion to be agreed to. I call the member Dunkley, and then we'll be going to the member for what Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. I thank you for the opportunity to pay my respects today to our many veterans who have served and those who currently served, those still with us and those who have passed on, the many men and women who face the stark horror of war and face what to many of us are unthinkable challenges and suffering in the name of democracy and freedom. And I thank the member for Kingston for uh, bringing this motion today. Uh, which is an important motion. And we had the opportunity, um, the member for Kingston and I, along with a number of other members, to go to Afghanistan, the UAE, and to fly over Iraq and Syria over the last two weeks as part of the parliamentary delegation to the Middle East region, hosted by Australian Defence Force personnel. We were able to gain a real insight into the work of the forces in Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria. We stayed at Camp Baird, named after Corporal Cameron Baird, posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross only last year. This incredible experience offered me the opportunity to literally stand shoulder to shoulder with our troops, while not in actual combat, at least in training and remembrance of the 44 Australians who have paid the ultimate sacrifices during our forces' current presence in the region. And we are fortunate today that we do not face a terrible worldwide conflict of the destructive nature of times past. Instead, our defence forces find themselves adapting to different forms of conflict, yet fight for the same values that motivated our forces a century ago. This week is the 90th anniversary of Armistice Day. The silencing of the guns on the Western Front has come to be associated with the commemoration of the price paid by our servicemen and women in the defence of our values and freedoms. The Remembrance Poppy, first known of the Flanders Fields, is a symbol as old as Remembrance Day itself. The imagery of the fields covering, covered in red reflects the many lost in those fields and has now been adopted internationally as a symbol of commemoration. The minute silence acknowledges the sacrifice that so many ordinary Australians have made, not only during World War I, but throughout all armed conflicts. The men and women who gave their lives to enable us to live the lives we have today are owed an internal debt, as are all those who sustained injuries that affected their lives once they returned, but who are not always acknowledged. Every one of us is connected somehow to those who have served our country. In Dunkley, both my father and grandfather were in the Australian Defence Forces based on the Mornington Peninsula, meaning that, for me, Remembrance Day also has a very local relevance. In this, I am like many of you who have come here, whether on Remembrance Day or through other ceremonies or in this parliament chamber here today, to pay respects to grandfathers, grandmothers, cousins, friends or perhaps to a complete stranger through the upcoming Remembrance Services. In Dunkley, the Frankston Memorial Park is the final resting place for over 200 ex-servicemen, and I was able to acknowledge their service yesterday. Dunkley itself has contributed many young people to the defence of Australia and Australia's interests and has a unique and rich military history. Sixteen soldiers from Frankston who were killed in action in World War I are listed on the honour roll at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra which I have the honour of visiting recently. And there are many more recognised at the Frankston War Memorial down the road in Beauty Park. Langwarren Flora and Fauna Reserve brings history right to our doorstep, having hosted both the prisoner of war camp, a military training and a military hospital. Many of us can never truly comprehend the hardship and strain undergone by our defence forces. And it was incredible to have an eye-opening experience in the UAE and Afghanistan over the last two weeks to see our defence forces and what they do in person. We are incredibly proud and grateful to those who have returned and those who did not, whether their scars are physical and can be seen or whether their wounds are only of the flesh ones. The homecoming from the battlefield to suburban life can be a challenge in that the person who went off to war is not always the same person who returns home. We recognise that the transition for those who come home can be difficult for those who served and their families and loved ones around them. In this, we see the valuable work of the RSL, the Department of Veterans Affairs and the numerous other support networks and organisations who aid our veterans and, our and their families. So as we come up to Remembrance Day, 
We remember the saying, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. <laughs>